Good morning, and welcome to Family On Air. I am your host, Ari Kaplan. We're live in Liberty Village on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the New Credit First Nation. On this program, we don't shy from difficult topics, and this week is especially difficult. Today, we'll be tackling the subject of medical assistance in dying, which we refer to as MAID, M-A-I-D. Some background. In 2015, the Supreme Court of Canada struck down the federal prohibition, criminal prohibition, on physician-assisted dying. And they said that the old law violated the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. In 2016, Parliament responded to that and passed a new law, Bill C-14. And since then, over 1,300 Canadians have passed away with medical assistance. And that's just in the first year since the legislation was passed. According to Dying with Dignity Canada and a forum poll, the new law is supported by four out of every five Canadians. So if 80% of people are in favor of MAID, where is the controversy? Who are the 20% opposed to medical assistance in dying? Well, at the Supreme Court of Canada, the primary opponents of the court challenge were religious groups, understandable given the near-universal theological bias in favor of preserving life at all cost. We will hear more from that from a rabbi who tells us that all major Jewish denominations, from Orthodox to Reform, are universally opposed to medically-assisted dying. The Talmud considers one who closes the eyes of someone while their soul is departing as spilling blood. Even the slightest intervention to hasten a person's death actively is akin to murder. These are strong words. In Ontario, some doctors oppose MAID and they have lobbied for the creation of a new Care Coordination Services Office, CCS. This office now allows patients to self-refer if they are interested in finding out about MAID as an option for their end-of-life care. And CCS is a new office with its own challenges and growing pains within the medical profession. In addition, some disability rights groups have expressed concerns that MAID can decrease individual self-determination due to the risk of abuse. That's also an understandable concern, which is why, as we will hear, there are extensive checks and balances in place in the new law as part of the criteria to practice. The Arch Disability Law Center has said that more information on palliative care alternatives should be offered to disabled people seeking MAID, and that attention must be paid to the factors that influence the well-being of persons with disabilities, including poverty, housing, and related supports and services, including to the homeless. It's hard to disagree with these points, which are not inconsistent with the values and practice supporting MAID and are reflected in part in the law. We'll hear from a doctor who practices MAID and who started her medical career treating the homeless. That's a concern that is well connected. As well, almost everyone agrees that making long-term care facilities as excellent as possible is first and foremost the desirable objective, so people can live as meaningfully and comfortably as possible for as long as possible. We want to hear what you think about this issue. You can call us at 416-360-0740. We are live on the air wanting to hear your experiences of people, family and friends, close relatives who have been dying either with physician support or not and what your experience of that was. That's 416-360-0740. If you're out of town, you can call us toll-free at 
4740. You can also email us at hello at familyonair.com. That's hello at familyonair.com. You can hear us live on Zoomer Radio. You can go to the Zoomer Radio website and watch a live stream of this presentation right now. So let's start by looking at the case of Carter v. Canada, decided by the Supreme Court of Canada in 2015 and which led to changes in the law. Carter was a landmark case that saw the Supreme Court of Canada strike down the criminal prohibition on causing death through medical assistance. After T was diagnosed